A professional screenwriter should know how to write a great one-pager. What gives you that idea? In this video, I'm going to explain exactly why that is, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And at the end, I'm even going to give you an example that you can download. But first, I need to come clean. I have been a professional screenwriter for longer than I've been writing one-pagers consistently. I found them to be a huge chore and I had very little confidence in what I was doing. And the ones that I did write were kind of boring and they were much more like a synopsis, which meant that they were also ineffective. But then in early 2023, I was talking to my buddy, Jason Gruich. Hi. Jason sent me two of his one-pagers and not for completed scripts, but just for ideas that he had in the hopper. And they were awesome. It was almost like reading movie trailers. Those one-pagers made me want to read the scripts. And that meant that they were a perfect tool for getting, say, a producer or an executive or a director excited. So I asked him how long they took him to write, and I believe his response was something like, Dude, it's not that fucking hard. So I had this idea that I'd been thinking about for a while, and I had a logline for it, and so I decided to try my hand at this one-pager magic. I wrote one up using Jason's for inspiration, and it did three important things for me. First, it caused the story to come together in my head in a way that it hadn't before, crystallizing some of the key elements that would make it work which meant that outlining was about to get a whole lot easier. Second, it allowed me to see the movie to some degree, and that made me even more excited to actually write it. Third, I sent that one pager to a producer I knew, who I thought might be a good fit, and he loved it so much that he said there was a very good chance he was in. And long story short, he read the treatment that followed and the script that followed, and now he's attached, and it's out to directors and production companies and financiers, and uh, hopefully we're moving forward with that. I've worked on three new projects since then, and I've used a one-pager for every single one of them before I've started on the actual treatment or outline. Not only is it something that I can show people as a way to generate excitement or workshop an idea, but it's also this like perfect natural step between writing a log line and writing the actual outline. It allows for faster iteration on ideas and it allows you to make sure that the concept is actually working before you commit to a document that's gonna be like seven or 10 pages or more. So let's get into how to write one, whether it's for an existing script or a brand new idea. First things first, I'm gonna help you get the problem of the blank page out of the way. Open up a document, whether it's like a Google Doc, a Word Doc, a Notes document, whatever. Open something up and just write the word title at the top of the page. Now, drop down a couple lines and write the word log line. And if you already know your title, that's great. Just fill it in. And if you already know your log line, just copy and paste it right into here. I'm not going to cover log lines in this video, but if you've never written one, it's basically just one or two sentences that boils the movie down to its core idea. It tells you who the protagonist is, what their main problem is, and essentially what they're gonna to do to solve it. It's usually the first thing that you use to pitch a script, and for many of us, it's also like our North Star as we write it, because it just encapsulates the concept. Okay, next, drop down a couple more lines to the body of your one-pager. Once again, although there are different styles of one-pagers, we are not writing a synopsis here. What you're writing is going to feel much more like a movie trailer. You're gonna give the reader a clear picture of genre, tone, setup, a handful of Act 2 highlights, and then you're gonna get out. For now, you're just gonna write the word opening, and then you're gonna drop down two more lines. Next, write the word inciting incident, and once again, drop down two more lines. Now, write forcing the protagonist into action, because that is essentially what we do to our characters as we move them toward Act 2. Drop down a couple more lines, and write moving into Act 2. Finally, drop down a couple more lines, and write Act 2 moments and a hook. And just like that, you've now got a framework for your one pager and hopefully it's already less intimidating. Each of those lines represents one or two paragraphs. That's it, which means that this is literally something that you can finish up today. Because I talked about one pagers already in a free class that I did on here, I actually made up a sample using Die Hard because it's a well-known movie that I absolutely love. So I'm gonna use that to talk about each of these sections. In the opening, which represents one paragraph, we're gonna talk about the following. You want to provide an opening or an opening image that is at least going to hint at the tone and the genre. Again, the more that you can actually see the movie, the more this is going to help you and anybody who reads it. For most movies, this is where you want to introduce the protagonist, along with like a couple things about them that will make us like or care about them. And finally, you want to provide enough setup in the opening to establish why the inciting incident will be a major problem for your protagonist. So in the Die Hard example, we open on a landing plane, inside is John McClane, a wisecracking New York City cop who happens to hate flying. But he's got more to be anxious about than that. He's on his way to see his wife Holly for the first time in months. She moved to LA to chase her blossoming career and thinking it wouldn't work out, John stayed behind. He's about to see firsthand how wrong he actually was. 
And just like that, we know who our lead is. The opening shot and the fact that he's a cop suggests genre, and the fact that he's wisecracking suggests it'll also be fun. We also understand that his marriage is on the rocks, and I even used that last sentence to kind of hook the reader into the inciting incident. So let's talk about that next. The inciting incident is typically either the best or the worst possible thing that could happen to your protagonist. It upsets their status quo, and it makes it incredibly difficult to get what they want. In Die Hard, John's gonna have trouble patching things up with his wife if they're dead. But also, there's a very clear emotional inciting incident when John discovers that Holly has changed her last name to Gennaro. Obviously, that's a bit outdated, but we totally get it on a dramatic level. Things are worse with his marriage than he thought. It suggests, like, at least in his mind, that she's already moved on. So here's how I wrote that. John arrives at Holly's office, which is about 40 floors up in a brand new skyscraper, so new it's got floors that are still being renovated. But more on those later. Upon arriving, John discovers something that underscores how much things have changed. Holly has dropped the last name McLean. You should really only need a paragraph for this section. That was enough space for me to drop in the entire inciting incident, but also set up these set pieces for act two by talking about the skyscraper. I like to take the key moment and really punch it up on the page by centering it and making it bold. You can do the same, but also know that that's just a style thing and it's totally up to you. Next, we're gonna move on to forcing your protagonist into action. This section represents the back half of act one where the protagonist typically realizes something needs to be done, but maybe they're not quite ready to do it yet. When we move into act two, we want our protagonist to be active and to actually decide to take action toward their goal. So this section is really about setting up or forcing that decision. This revelation spawns an argument, but as an executive, Holly needs to step away to make a speech to her employees, and John takes a moment to freshen up and cool off, realizing he was unfair and now intent on smoothing things over. Except, unfortunately, that's when the terrorists strike. Half a dozen armed men, led by Hans, their brilliant suit-wearing boss, storm the building and quickly take everyone hostage. Hearing gunshots, John manages to slip away to the CEO's office. Unfortunately, that's where Hans is headed too. John hides and listens as Hans brings the CEO into his office, questioning him and demanding a vault code that will give him access to $640 million in bearer bonds. And when the CEO doesn't give it up, Hans shoots him in the head. For the Die Hard one pager, I used three paragraphs here, but they also kind of included a physical inciting incident when Hans and all of his guys show up. So you might only need a couple paragraphs in order to get the job done. You'll notice I stylized a couple lines here as well. Again, it's not necessary, but I think it adds flavor and it helps you see the movie even better. So we're getting pretty close to being done here. We have introduced our antagonist. We've turned John's world upside down. We've made it crystal clear that this is a life or death situation and making it even worse on an emotional level, we also kind of left John and Holly's argument unresolved. Importantly, John knows that he was wrong, and as readers, we're beginning to understand that the only thing that's going to fix his marriage is a high-octane action movie. We've got all sorts of stakes here, and it now feels not only sensible, but critical for John to take action, so that's what he's gonna do. In the next section, moving into Act 2, you're gonna show your protagonist making a decision to move toward their goal. 99% of the time, this is just as true in dramas and comedies and family films as it is in an action thriller. Act two is also where our protagonist essentially moves into an entirely new world, whether that's literally or figuratively. So let's show all of that right here. Realizing now that it's life or death, not just for him, not just for everyone inside, but also for Holly, John escapes once again, takes out a terrorist, steals his radio and machine gun, and starts putting together a plan. John has made a decision and we got to see a really cool action sequence as he did it. That's perfect. And also, if you're finding this video helpful, now is a perfect time for you to make a decision and like it and subscribe. And now that John's made his decision and you've made your decision, we are truly in Act 2, which is where the movie and the concept come alive. In an action movie like Die Hard, that means that this is where you get a lot of the best action sequences and a lot of our favorite one-liners. And you can apply that same thinking to basically any other genre. But again, we are not writing a synopsis here. We are writing something that is much closer to a movie trailer. So all we need to do here is give glimpses of what Act 2 will look like. This is still going to be plenty to hook somebody who's reading your one-pager, but it also takes some of the pressure off if, like me, you're using it pretty early on in your process. So in this section, I typically only use a single paragraph, and I also like to end it with some kind of hook. Whether it's fist fights or gunfights, whether it means leaping across elevator shafts or off the building itself, whether it means detonating a massive block of C4, John's going to take these guys down and save his wife, or he's going to die hard trying. That paragraph is all we need to understand what the movie is going to feel like. It makes the genre and the tone crystal clear. Yeah, this is going to be an action-packed blockbuster, but it's not taken. 
it's also going to be fun. So that's a one pager, the way that I like to write them and the way that my buddy Jason Gruich inspired me to write them. Hopefully this gives you some inspiration of your own. And if you'd like to download the Die Hard one pager I wrote up for future reference, I've got good news for you. There is a link in the description below this video. And that's it for this one. So thanks so much for watching everybody and I will see you next time.